What's up guys, this is Jan for Chess24. This video we will have a look at a recent Wei Yi game played in the HD Bank Masters. That's as far as I understand is an open tournament in China with lots of strong players. Wei Yi had an early setback where he got crushed in a semi-slav gone wrong. But in this game in round seven he gets to play his favorite opening the Nidorf Sicilian with the white pieces. His opponent, Yu Jinglun from China, is, as far as I know, one of the world's strongest untitled players, 2540, but does not have a FIDE title yet. I'm sure he'll be a Grandmaster soon. You could argue that his opening choice, at the very least, is brave, because Wei Yi he has a bit of a reputation as a Nidorf killer. Then again, I'm frankly, always a bit stunned that he has that much success with his pet line here, this move bishop to g5, because it's so move by move computer analysis heavy. And you would think his opponents have him figured out because he plays bishop g5 all the time, but he keeps posing fresh problems and also helps that he's insanely good in the complications that often ensue. Bishop g5, the two main moves here are e6, which we will not see in this game, when after f4, Queen b6 or h6 followed by queen b6 has been a topic of lots of recent discussion. In this game we see the alternative that is also popular, the move knight bd7, covering the colleague here and keeping black's options a bit more open. One idea, as far as I understand it, and I really don't understand much about the bishop g5 knight, is that queen b6 or queen a5, early queen sorties, are often part of the plan while not committing to any particular pawn formation. Therefore, I'm making a fool of myself here, I honestly don't know any better, but against f4 lines, it remains an option to go e5 in one go. I think they start with queen b6. But I'm guessing that's the difference between committing to e6 early. However, knight bd7, of course, has drawbacks as well. Black loses sight of this e6 square a bit, and the knight can no longer go to c6. Wei Yi plays the move he's been playing recently, the move bishop to c4, amongst other things, hinting that if you go e6, peace sacrifice on that square might happen. And he's also saying, I don't need to castle queenside, I'm happily putting my king on g1. Black plays the main move here, once again, disclaimer, not an expert. Queen to b6, targeting b2, and Wei Yi says, be my guest. I'm sure bishop b3 is legal here as well. But that's not why way he plays the bishop g5 knight of. He is not that concerned about keeping his b2 pawn. This is a position Wei Yi recently had on the board against Luke van Veli in the Vikings A tournament, which was a bit of a breakthrough, I thought, for Wei Yi. He's been a prodigy for a while now, became a grandmaster at 13, but he's approaching 18 and some people say he was not making that much progress for like two years, at least his rating didn't. But this Vikings A tournament where he, I can't even remember, finished second or third and was in contention for first place, really was a different, more mature player. And therefore, I have a feeling he's about to arrive on the scene. And it makes, well, he's arrived obviously, but arrived in the very world top. And it makes sense, keeping a close eye on him. Anyway. Queen c5 is the move that was played in Vikings A by Van Veli. There, bishop d5, white, has to keep his bishops alive. e6 and rook to e1 was played. Another typical idea for these, or Nidorfs, you often leave a piece on prees on the d5 square. ed, ed, opening the e file up for an attack. And white tends to be, I don't know, tends to get enough play. I'm using general phrases because I don't know. I don't know what happens after king d8, but I do know I wouldn't want this position against Wei Yi. In the game against Van Veli, Wei Yi, Van Veli after rook e1, bishop e7, bishop e3, queen a5, bishop takes e6. Luke did get crushed pretty badly. I'm sure Wei Yi's opponent had a good look at that game and he decided that queen c5 doesn't have to be played, that it is indeed possible to grab the pawn on b2. That is also what my computer is endorsing, so surely not a surprise for Wei Yi, especially since this move has already been played at the highest level. Wei Yi blitzed out knight d5, 
Another move that comes to mind is queen d2, but I'm guessing then black is in time to, I don't know, bring his queen back, maybe go queen b4 or queen b6, and there's no direct attack. Knight d5 is the move that has been played here. Knight takes d5 is pretty much forced, since you don't want to allow this family fork on c7. Knight takes d5, where ye goes rook to b1. You could change the move order around, start with bishop d5, but it would lead to the same thing after queen b6, rook b1, queen c7. We would get the same position as in the game, where this occurred after rook b1, queen c3, bishop d5, and now queen to c7. So black has grabbed the pawn, but he's still a bit behind in development. The good news for him is he doesn't have any particular weaknesses, and white he has to work to open the position up, where he still in book here, plays the move f4, which had also been played before. In some lines preparing f5, e5, sorry, but mainly preparing to use this pawn as a battering ram, should black go e6, which he will eventually, to open the position up. e6 is indeed played. Of course, the first thing you'd want to double check if you go e6 here is, doesn't this sacrifice crush me? But turns out here, after takes takes, queen c4 is a pretty strong move, targeting this knight immediately. After f5, knight to e5 or knight to f6, it looks like white doesn't have enough firepower to really break through here. None of this news to Mr. Wei Yi. He plays the move rook to e1, an idea we've already seen in his game against Van Veli. Once again saying, be my guest, please open the e-file. Here after e d e d, king d8 is not even legal. So black would have to try to return the material immediately with knight e5. But then I let my computer run a bit. It indicates that white is usually better here after queen to h5. Which, yeah, I can believe the black king is still stuck in the center. White will eventually get his piece back. Things are looking dangerous. Therefore, black should and did not take this bishop but instead should do something else. And the game's played in practice here by a bunch of strong players. I believe the strongest player on the black side, Austrian number one, Markus Zrager. He chose the move knight to f6 here, and that seems to me to be the best move. Just continuing to develop. You don't want to allow black to go bishop e7 without doing something. So white doesn't have anything better than takes takes. Black had, keeps his extra pawn. His king is a little exposed in the center, but I have a feeling, at the very least, this is playable for black. I'm not sure who's better and why, and clearly Wei Yi was willing to enter this. But I have a feeling that black should be okay here. It should be three, I don't know, maybe h5, stopping queen to h5. Does not look like a wide advantage to me. Instead, once again, I still wouldn't play this line against Wei Yi, but having arrived here, knight f6 is the way to go. Instead, Shu Yinglun chose the move knight to c5, which looks very, very natural, covering e6, covering b7, but it turns out that this is just half a tempo too slow. Knight c5 was all Wei Yi needed to see um, to launch an attack that can no longer be parried. Believe it or not, I did not find a defense for black after knight c5, Wei Yi is Relentless con continues with f5. I'm sure that wasn't a surprise because ed, ed, once again, opening this e file is too dangerous for black. King d7, for example, queen h5, targets f7, g6, takes, takes, queen g4, check. And this king will not make it much further. Knight e6, queen e6, checkmate. So the bishop should not be touched. h6, bishop h4 doesn't really change things. Therefore, I'm sure black had pinned his hopes on the move bishop e7, and indeed it looks like he is about to finish his development and keep an extra pawn and a very powerful knight on c5. White has to act, and act he does. f takes e, no surprises, f takes e forced. And another typical piece sacrifice for these structures, knight to f5. I don't think that's the move black missed. Still. Impressive to see that Wei Yi, in every other game in these structures, manages to sacrifice all his pieces here. I remember, I think it's a Tal quote from like the 1980s or 70s, that his signature squares f5 and d5 are so well covered these days that you can't really sacrifice pieces there anymore. But Wei Yi makes it happen in the year 2017. Knight f5, 
Not the star move of the game. The star move is the next move. After knight f5, it's pretty obvious that, once again, you cannot open the e-file because disaster would strike immediately. Black has to keep an eye on the d6 pawn, queen c7. Queen d7 will lead to the same thing. And yeah, the reason why I'm showing you this game is the next move, which took Wei Yi three seconds to play. Obviously, he had calculated it earlier, but it is a very impressive move, and it's also the only move that wins. Bishop to c6 check. Giving up this bishop for, yeah, a tempo to install this knight on d6. Queen takes c6, bc is similar, but even worse for black. Knight takes d6 check, king e7, and still, the eye test says black should be fine, no? Piece up, d6 is hanging, rook d8 is coming, the king is not getting mated immediately, but the eye test sometimes is very wrong. Maybe my eyes are just not that great. Because after queen g4, turns out that black is utterly lost. If you take this knight with a queen, just queen g7, followed by queen h8 check and rook d1, when, yeah, the attack will eventually get the job done. If you take it with a king, you have the slight issue. This king could end up being a bit short of squares. Let's say here. Not a lot of places to go. e5, queen e5. This is covered, this is covered. You get the idea. This is the only move and after queen takes d6 would be checkmate. Therefore, yeah, hard to find a defense. g6, another logical looking move, but then queen g5 check is very awkward. Queen d6, same idea we just saw. Rook d1, king c7, queen e5. Once again, the king gets checkmated here. Well, king to d7, trying to hide behind this knight on d6 will not lead to a great success either after rook ed1 or knight to c4. Black is just getting crushed. Let's say rook ed1, king c7 to get out of the way and queen e5 hitting this rook and threatening all kinds of nasty discovered checks. There's no defense. There just isn't. Try for yourself. Too many threats. Queen g5, queen g7. Black tried his last chance to move knight to d7. The point is after queen d7, king g, queen g7, king d6, queen h8, at least black doesn't get checkmated quickly. The king can now hide on c7 with this knight, providing some shelter. Probably white is better here as well, but the game would continue. The problem is after knight d7, he's in for, I don't know, I was gonna say a rude awakening, but I'm pretty sure he was very awake and aware of the dangers here already. The problem is, White doesn't have to take on g7. He can just calmly play e5 and none of black's problems have disappeared. g6 runs into queen g5, king f8, rook f1 and checkmate will be delivered within the hour. Mm. Rook g8 is the same story. Queen g5 is just crushing. So what do you do? Knight takes e5 might look like an idea to take on d6 later, but here, well, many ways lead to Rome already. The easiest is to just grab material and win like this. Therefore, after e5, it turns out there is no defense and black already decided to resign. Early resignation, but as mentioned, there is just no defense and Wei Yi does not miss a, miss a step in these positions, as he once again proves against a very well prepared opponent who must expect this exact line from him. He just needs 21 moves to force resignation. He is a force of nature in these positions where pieces are flying around, especially when it goes against the Black King and he keeps proving it. However, being the captain hindsight that I am after prepare Black's preparation because Knight F6 has already been shown to be the correct move. And that's what he had to do, especially if he could expect this variation from Wei Yi. Still, Wei Yi won't mind. I'm sure his fans won't mind. Nice victory there for him. In the tournament, he did not manage to win. He did quite well. I think he finished in shared second. But victory went to his opponent in this game. Li Kuang Li Yem, here with the white pieces, managed to win the event. We'll see how things continue for Wei Yi. Thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.